This is a very important topic for me. The question is, is, is uh, there justice for victims, for survivors of gender-based violence? I would actually push the envelope further. How can we ensure that there is justice for gender-based violence survivors? This is particularly important when we talk about internal displacement. Just imagine yourselves in a situation of armed conflict or human rights violations, and suddenly you realize that in order to save your life and the lives of your family, you have to flee. And within particularly contexts like this, there is always a heightened risk of protection for the people, including gender itself, particularly for women and girls. And this is only, we're only talking about transit. What about at the time that then you arrive at to you, where you are supposed to find safety, be it in a host community or in an IDP camp? And here there are again heightened protection risks that are actually, unfortunately, targets women and girls because of their vulnerability. And I can tell you, you can just look at humanitarian reports from way back, from 20 years, 30 years, and one of the main problems that come up is gender-based violence for the women and for the girls. This situation has actually give, been given a lot of attention, mainly, first of all, by humanitarians. Because when you, the humanitarian um, agencies and workers come to the IDPs, internally displaced persons, then they realize that part of the protection is the problem of gender-based violence. And so, being humanitarians, it is, of course, natural that their response would be humanitarian. They provide counseling, they provide psychosocial uh, trauma healing, they provide locks for the shelter, etc. It's very humanitarian. But at the same time, if you talk to the internally displaced women who have been survivors of gender-based violence, it is obvious that they want more. So this leads me to my first point about justice for survivors of gender-based violence. And that is, first of all, we have to hear from them. And hearing from them means not just consulting them, but really listening to what they want and trying to ensure that what they say, what justice is for them, is included in the programmatic approach of humanitarian and now human rights organizations. Once this problem has caught the attention of the, the world, then it, it really came about that more human rights lawyers uh, came in. But I have to say, as a human rights lawyer myself, not enough. Because the knee-jerk reaction always, in cases of internal displacement, is a humanitarian approach. This is one reason why when I took on the mandate of the Special Rapporteur on the Human Rights of IDPs, I was appointed in 2016, and I've been working in this field for a long time, interviewing women, and one of the things I realized is I'm a human rights lawyer, and this is not just a humanitarian issue, this is not just a development issue, but this is a justice issue. And for me, that is quite important. And one thing, one, one, one episode in my work as a human rights lawyer in, within the context of forced migration that always comes back to me is when I spoke to this, to an internally displaced woman who had actually got, been, he, she went through a, an enormously terrible episode in her life. She was walking with her children in order to flee the armed conflict, because there were the armed groups who were trying to, to harass them, and there were military operations. And on the way, she was raped, and as well as her two girls. And that was already a problem that, but we need to leave, we need to leave. After they were raped, they went on trying to seek safety. Believe it or not, within a span of one week, trying to escape the armed groups and the military operations, they were raped five times. 
average once a day. And until now, it really hurts me to think about this story because I cannot just see anybody deserving, if you want, or really having, having this, this story and still live decently and in dignity to tell, to tell those stories. And she did. She went, she was able to find succor in an IDP camp that was set up by the humanitarians. And there she found relative safety. However, she realized that it is, there was a lot of gender-based violence as well being done in the IDP camp. And so when she realized this, she basically decided that she needs to do something about it. And this is a very much an initiative in her case. And remember, she was trying to do this at the time when the issues that concerned her were not even resolved in the first place. But what I asked her, why, why, did you want, why do you want to do this? Because I don't want that what happens to me happens again and again and again. So when I made the report that I just presented to the General Assembly last, um, last couple of days, the report was about transitional justice because this is a, a field that I know can help with regard to justice for survivors of gender-based violence. And one of the things that also in my, in my work, I've realized that justice can be very different for different people. We heard the fantastic testimonies of Teresa and Zainab with regard to the use of the courts, and that is very important. At the same time, within transitional justice, some of the women just want to know why it happened and where are the perpetrators and what's being done to them. They will not necessarily go to court. They will not necessarily want the criminal justice that most of us would want, because that's also the way we think justice should be dispensed with. But for them, it is important to know the truth about what happened. In, um, in Niger, where I went, one of the country visits I did, and I was talking to a lady who had very confidential information, and she was telling me how she had been harassed by members of the armed group. And it was important for her to actually say to me, what is justice for me? Justice for me is having the police and those non-state armed, uh, non -armed, uh, non armed groups going through a system where they understand that there is no justification to sexually harass women just because we are women. And for her, that is justice. She just doesn't want to happen, it to happen again. So, and that, of course, for those of you who are familiar uh, with, the, with the pillars of transitional justice is the pillar of the guarantee of non-recurrence. Another, another example that I would like to um, actually uh, share with you is the story of a woman I met in Latin America. And she was actually a victim of the Maras. And these are the criminal bandits, criminal gangs in this particular country. And she was telling me that she actually wants education for her children. She wants to set up a little store. And she wants to ensure that her children are safe. And so I asked her, are you sure that's justice for you? You know, being the lawyer, being a human rights lawyer, I was like trying to, trying to elicit from her, maybe you'd like to go to the court, right? Um, she didn't bite it. <laughs> she did not take the bait. But she said, it's actually very important for me that for me justice is moving forward. And justice for me means enabling us to move forward, to live in normality. But then I asked, what about the perpetrators? Then they will do it, do it again. And she looked at me, but that is what the state is supposed to resolve, not me. So what is important in the end of the day is 
justice for us may be criminal justice. We, that's what we're trained for as a lawyer, as lawyers, as being in the legal profession. But in situations of internal displacement, I've come to realize that it could be broader. And we have to respect as well the wishes and the aspirations of the IDP women themselves to be able to tell them these are the options and then to, for them to be able to choose what justice is for them. <laughs> and with that, in, in situations of internal displacement, I really would like to insist that without access to justice and without accountability through any form of transitional justice, internal displacement, gender-based violence will not be resolved at all. Thank you very much. Thank you.